All right, the last time I left you guys, I had just finished assembling this cabinet, and it's been all glued and clamped and uh, dried for days. And now I've gone ahead and started to get ready for paint. I've actually primed it with two coats, and I sanded in between. Now for the primer, I used an oil-based primer. This is just off-the-shelf stuff over at, um, you know, Home Depot or whatever, Lowe's, your local hardware store. Um, and it is covered in paint. It is the... I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Uh, there we go. Zinser. There you go. See that there? Zinser from rust -Oleum. And it, it worked okay. Uh, I've never used it before, so it was an experimentation. Now, I will tell you, since after learning from doing the Tutankham, um, that even though it's been primed, it needs to be sanded. Now, this is my scrap piece here. I'll try to see if I can get it just so the light can show you. Um, Hard to see here in the light, but what I'm trying to show you is that this surface here is rough um, after the primer goes on. And when the primer goes on, as you hear my nails on it, um, it's not it's not smooth. So what happens is, is you need to sand it in between, and I used um, fine sandpaper, and I went over it, and now. It's much smoother. Now, hopefully when I apply my paint, I don't end up with any wood grain popping through because I've done two coats of primer and sanded it in between each one. The next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is get the black ready for paint and hopefully we can get that all on here and then we'll let that sit for a day or so and then we'll go ahead and put the aluminum on and assuming the black spray is okay, we spray the aluminum color, that silver color for the Robotron. We're gonna do J's as well. And hopefully that comes out nice and pretty, but this one will get done first so we don't screw anything up. All right, so there we go. That's where we're left off with on this, on this cabinet here. Okay, so both cabinets have a, you know, several coats of that silver paint on. I used the Rust-Oleum aluminum and it was oil-based. Now, this is the reproduction cabinet. This came out with a nice, smooth surface um, that I'm happy with. The only things that may have shown up through were a couple little, you know, nicks in the original wood grain, which uh, I'm happy with. So, this is nice and smooth, and here is the, we'll get real close. You can even see my hand reflecting on it, kind of. Um, so, I'm happy with it. Oil-based paint definitely took some work to get used to. It thins quicker than the latex that I'm used to, so my court didn't go as far. Um, but, you know, that's that. Now, the original cab was given to me ready to paint, so that's what I did. Touched up a couple spots, and I painted it. And if we stand in certain lights, you can see every spot that was filled shining through. I think I read online somewhere that people call them shiners. <laughs> Um, so this is not leaving. This is not, we're not even putting the stencils on this yet until I figure out what to do. Now, uh, you know, not to discredit whoever did this, but you know, this is what happens if things aren't sanded all the way and then primed appropriately. I don't think it's, you know, based on research, I don't think it's, you know, whether oil-based or latex, I just think it could have just been taken care of a little bit better. Let me see if I had to keep my hand here to keep it in focus. So like, you know, here's a spot and these all show through. The other side is the same way. Um, especially at certain angles, it really shows up. Now the planking we knew was gonna happen. Um, I'm not thrilled with it, but you know, if we do take care of it, the planking will probably be taken care of. This is one section up here that I addressed, and that came out fine. So just make sure if you're doing any sort of filler work that you sand it appropriately. Um, maybe I could throw another coat on and it would hide it. It might take two more coats. It just, I, you know, I'm not sure. We're gonna. We're gonna chat with the owner and figure out what the best thing to do for this cabinet is and see if he even likes the planking that's here. But we're gonna go ahead and get ready to put the stencil on this and we will go from there. Oh, 
And even on this cabinet here, I was I thought they had sanded you know all the original paint off, but the original logo showed through. I'll see if I can find a picture and pop that in here for you to see what it was originally. All right, let's go ahead and put on the stencil vinyl stuff from GameStencils.com so we can go ahead and do that. So a couple helpful tips for you when you're installing vinyl that's this big. Uh, lining it up can sometimes actually seem easier, but one thing I like to do is kind of, if you know you're gonna have a straight edge, I trim out a little bit here, because that's supposed to match up. Then all I have to do is bring that up here to that corner, tape it and line it up. Now, you can't just do one. I tried to do a couple other ones down here so that I know my edge is going to line up straight. Um, that's just one simple quick thing you guys can do to line up something this big when you're doing it. Now, as same as before when I install my vinyl, I'm going to tape across the middle and I'll do the top half and then I'll do the bottom half and that way I can let gravity work with me instead of against me. So another thing to make your life easier, especially when working with these giant pieces of vinyl, These quick 99 cent clamps here, these quick clamps are the way to go, especially if you've got like overspray on your paper and things don't want to stick to it. So that is one way to kind of keep this, or help keep this in place. Now, you know this is the one that goes down first because these are the ones with the registration marks. Now, in this case, the color on this Robotron Mini that's going down first is red. So we're gonna put the red down first. All these letters are red with blue highlights. So we'll go ahead and put the vinyl on and we'll get painting. Okay, so the stencil is on, but I wanna show you that. I don't know if it's the paint I used or whatnot, but this is the um, Oracle uh, masking vinyl, which is meant to be removed very easily, except I will show you, we'll do it down here on the corner, that this removes way too easily. So I actually made when I pulled off the mask um, very difficult to remove. Now maybe um, what they could do next time is use the low tack mask so that I'm not pulling the vinyl up over, you know, up with it. So what happens is eventually as you're pulling, 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 it gets stretched out. And I've got a little stretched out corner right here that I need to um, just make sure that it gets all lined up and I do need to recenter my the center of my four here and it's even coming up too but that did make it difficult it can't it took me a lot longer to get it off than I normally take to remove mask but it's on so go ahead and we'll do the other side and then throw some paint on all right so the second side is on and it went on much better than the first. Now one thing you should do is make sure that you cover up the registration mark. One, so you can find it again. And two, because this is actually cut out as a rectangle if you look close. So what that means is uh, you could end up getting a small faint line when you paint over it. Vinyl does have a tendency to shrink over time, so depending on how long you let the vinyl sit, it could actually show up. So we're just gonna take a piece of tape. We're gonna cover that up. And then the other thing you're gonna go ahead and do is just mask off anything else that you need to mask off. So we're gonna mask off the bottom and whatnot. So once you've put your tape on, give it everything uh, one last quick look on the side and you wanna look for uh, places like this where the vinyl is coming up. So we'll just push that air bubble out and make sure it's not lifting. Check things like corners. There's another little spot right here. So, whoop, push those all out. All right, let's cover up our registration marks and get painting. All right, so the last time I left you, I had just finished doing the stencil. And if you guys followed the quick updates, it came out like junk. So I ended up sanding everything off. Everything, all the silver, all the red, completely off the cabinet again. Took a belt sander to it and then a DA sander. And then I also did the same with my friend's cabinet here. 
because this did not turn out well, and we saw that before. So I also took the belt sander to this, and I went through and I patched a couple, you know, bigger chunks, like there's a chunk here missing, and then we had to do a quick uh, repair back there, but otherwise, I'm just gonna sand this, take care of that body work. You know, there's a lot of body work down here on the bottom. I guess the bottom was really chewed up, and the same over on this side. And I've decided to go with automotive primer this time, an automotive paint. So here is the gray uh, primer that we're going to use. Um, this is a nice, easy mix ratio of one to one, one to one primer, and one to one with acetone. And then, you know, based off of what I had seen on Clove, there was a, a silver, I haven't opened this yet, but this is what that other person used. So I'm gonna open this and we'll see how well that looks. Um, but this is acrylic enamel and it's automotive paint. And I will put the disclaimer out there that this stuff is not cheap. Um, but here you go, this is the paint code. This is the new mild silver metallic from the 2005 to 2009 Hyundai model line. And the code is BW. So, and this uses a reducer and a hardener and has very specific mixing ratios that you mix together to spray into the gun. And I'll go over how to do that. I also did that with the Donkey Kong Rusto mod. This is the same type of paint I used. So, this is what we're gonna use. Let me go ahead and uh, open up this can real quick so we can take a quick look. So we're gonna take a look at this silver paint just to make sure, hey, is it really, truly silver? Just got this mixed yesterday. Haven't even opened it yet. Well, there is definitely, definitely silver. So, at least it's not brown. <laughs> right, John? This paint is brown. All right, so here we go. That will need to get stirred. Maybe I'll stir it real quick, just so we can take a quick look. We're not gonna be painting it today. Just so you guys can see it on the stick. And just so you guys know for approximate pricing, I don't know, it'll depend locally where you are, but this was about 75 bucks for a quart. Now when you mix it and add the reducer and the hardener, you do get more than a quart. And you'll be able to go a little bit as far as distance goes. There you go, that's what that silver looks like. I think that's pretty. That's a pretty good looking silver to me. I like that silver. That's what we're gonna use. All right, let's go ahead and we'll put the lid back on and we'll get everything ready for priming. So before we mix the paint, I just want to show you guys when you're using a mixing cup like this, instead of actually having to do a lot of math, which you could do if the ratio is one to one, you come up here to where it says one to one, and you put in, if you go, if you fill the first thing to one, the one line, when you add the second chemical, it goes to that other one. And everything's on a ratio of one to one. Same thing up here, if you're following any of one of these other ratios, like let's say we're doing this three to one. You put the first one in to the one, then you add the second chemical to the one, and the third one to the one. It's whatever number you're matching it to. Like if we were doing the four, we'd go to the four, the four, and the four. That's just a quick and dirty version on how you use these mixing cups, or you can measure it out by ounces and do it that way. So if you put in four ounces, you put in you, you, you know, you do, you do your math and you end up with eight if you're doing one to one. So there you go. That's just the kind of the quick version how to do this for our primer. It's one to one. So we're going to go ahead and do that, mix it together. And we're going to be using acetone to reduce it. So here's the primer we're going to be using. It's just gray acrylic primer and it will have a mixing ratio of one to one. Now they tell you what the other, you know, if this is the FP 401 here. And then let's see if you can see that. The other one is the FT 210. 
all that is is acetone. Um, you verify your part numbers and everything else, but for this case, that's just um, acetone. So we'll go ahead and we'll open this up. And there we go, that's our gray primer. And then you're gonna wanna stir. Now sometimes this stuff sits on the shelf for a long time, so you wanna make sure you stir this really good. And you might get a little bit of gunk down at the bottom. If you end up getting any of that, I've made this mistake before and didn't get it. I stirred it, thought it was good. They even shook it at the store. And I went to spray my primer and the whole thing ran. It just wasn't right. Granted, that was my first time spraying. Um, but you want to make sure that this is ready to go. So we'll stir this for a few more minutes and then we'll go ahead and start mixing it. So you stir this for a while. I'm going to demonstrate how to use this one to one ratio. We're actually going to, I'm going to pour it to the four. And that means when we're done pouring, when we add the acetone, we'll end up at the second four. So you're going to try to use that to kind of gauge how much you need um, when you're doing it. You want to make sure that you're mixing enough paint, but not too much so that you don't have any waste either. So we're going to this four here with the primer. And then when we put the acetone in, we'll end up at that four. So let's see if we can do this without spilling. Almost there. Okay. There's that for. It's always nice to keep paper towels handy so you can clean up your cans as you're doing this. And then we're going to use some acetone. We'll be going right to that other four. Okay, then we stir. You want to make sure it's nice and stirred and stirred well. And it will be um, pretty thin when you do it. When you're spraying through a spray gun, the stuff is usually pretty thin. We'll stir, stir, stir. You want to make sure you stir it for a good amount of time. And I will raise the camera up here so you guys can see what it looks like. So we stir it. And now, you know, when I'm mixing latex, I'm going for a milky consistency. And I like to see that it drips off the stick at a good rate. You know, if it's too thick, the gun clogs. If it's too thin, it runs away on you. And it sags. And that's what it looks like when it drips off. They do sell viscosity meters that you could get, and I don't have one of those. Um, I try to follow the directions and do the best I can. So once you stir this for a while, the next thing to do is to pour it into your spray gun and you want to use a strainer. Let me show you what I mean by strainer. All it is is a paper funnel, like this. Let's see, all right, there we go. And it's, you know, I got a screen on it. Basically, all that does is catch any of the debris or gunk that might be in there. So let's go ahead and pour it into the gun. So when I pour my paint into the gun, it's nice to have a gun holder. Most people don't. I don't. You find some way to wedge it up. Vice grips, super handy, um, or a vice, not a vice grip. 
is an excellent way to hold a paint uh, hold a paint gun so you can get the paint in. Now if you're using this is an HVLP uh, so it feeds from the top. If you're using a canister siphon feed that's on the bottom so you don't have to worry about this but same principle. So let's go ahead and pour in our paint. We put our funnel right in here and you know you make sure that this is all clean and everything too beforehand. So there we go, our primer is in the gun, and now we'll go ahead and see if we can set it up to spray. A couple other things to take note of on the can when you're following is not only the mix ratio, but any sort of pressure settings. So this is 8 to 10 PSI at the cap for the HVLP gun, which is what we're using. And then we can sand this in 15 to 20 minutes. So the number of coats that we should be applying is two to three. We'll probably err on the side of three. And those are the important things you need to know when dealing with these type of paints. Um, whereas, you know, when we're dealing with oil-based or latex, the times are, you know, your best guess. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and set the spray gun up. Now, actually, well, before I do that, I want to do, show you a couple things on the spray gun, just so you guys know, you know, if you're ever doing one, there's a couple things you need to know. Uh, right here. This is your how much air you're getting, and it kind of controls your fan pattern, um, you, whether you have the fan open wide or narrow. Um, we like to have a nice, solid fan width, and you also want to control how much paint is coming out of here, and you do that by turning this knob. Now, when it's out all the way, you're getting a lot of paint, and you screw it in slowly until you get the desired amount. Now the way I set it up and I'll show you is I have it backed out all the way and I go in from there. I don't want the paint to run, but this is a good starting point. Okay, and I'll show you how it goes. So my camera ran out of memory. We gotta do this on my cell phone before I, I lose it. Okay, so I wanna show you guys a couple of things. We've got a air pressure gauge here and we wanna make sure that it's at the eight to 10 PSI when it's at the cap. So if I pull the air trigger down, it's just over 10. So we'll dial it down a little bit. And the other thing I want to show you is here is the nozzle. And you can turn that 90 degrees. So depending on how you want your fan pattern to be up and down or side to side. And that is, you know, typically we have it like this till we get vertical pattern like that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll turn down this by turning that knob there. And then we'll do a couple test sprays and uh, I'll have to kind of chime back in after I do this because we ran out of memory. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've done the two to three coats of primer, and this is actually a good time to now sand. I don't know if you guys can see this showing up yet, but the closer I get, you can actually start to see it. So this rough stuff here wasn't here, but what happens is it's wood and it raises. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is afterwards, you know, this is now dry. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sand this all down so it's nice and smooth again. And then we'll be able to go ahead and put on some of the other paint. Uh, I'll check and see if we've got any bare spots or if we need to do any more work. But if we do, we'll put more primer on. If not, this is done. But um, even, you know, bare primer when it's smooth does need to be sanded. And if we look over here, this was, you know, a nice smooth surface. And oh, there's my shadow. And um, this is still rough and needs to be sanded. So we're going to go ahead and do that before we put any more paint down. We're going to sand everything. But there you go. Everything's primed again. We'll get everything the once over. And uh, maybe, with any luck, we'll get some silver paint on today. That would be nice. That's what I'd like to do. All right, guys. Let's get sanding. All right, sanded it. And I went through. I looked at things. I just kind of quick put some... Uh, glazing putty over to fill some marks. That cabinet's still going to have a little bit of planking, a lot better than what it was. I tried to fill some of the bigger things uh, as best I could. But So we'll go ahead and we'll let that dry and we'll sand it down. And then I'll take a look at see how things are. I'm going to put some filler primer on and then we may do another coat of primer 
over top and we will then be ready for paint. We'll see if that happens today. Not confident, maybe tomorrow, but that's okay. It's, it's progress and I'll be happier with the outcome knowing that I've seen some of these things and fixed them. So anyway, I hear a kid on the monitor. He's awake, you know. Yep, yep, there it is. He's awake. Time to go get him. It's bottle time. He knows. All right, guys. We'll let that dry and then we'll get back to work after the bottle. All right, the bench is a mess. We're going to clean the bench up. But before I do that, I want to show you the product data sheet that we're going to be using. This gives us our mixing ratios for what we're using. Um, and if you can see for this, it is now eight parts of color to two parts reducer to one part hardener. And then you actually use your reducer based on the temperature it is outside. We're using a moderate reducer, which is perfect for today. And that should give us, you know, the standard drying time that we need. And now what they do is they actually have different types of reducers for different climates that you're in. Obviously you don't paint anything lower than 50 degrees, but moderate seems to do it here in New England. Warm maybe if you're further down south, but that's, that's the idea here. And um, then the other things we need to take a look at are, you know, our drying schedule and um, recoding. So if we take a look here at our drying schedule, air dry um, just under an hour at 75 degrees. That's out of dust. Um, and then to delivery, which, you know, you let something sit overnight. And then we can buff it after 24 hours if we need to. Well, I'm not going to buff it. And then our recoat time. This is important. Allow color to flash until hand slick between coats for approximately five minutes. We literally are waiting about five minutes in between coats. Now, for this one as well, we're doing two to three medium wet coats uh, with a 50% overlap. And our gun is about eight to 10 inches from the cabinet. And we're doing eight to 10 PSI for the HVLP which is low, but it's high volume, low pressure. That's exactly what we want. So we're gonna clean this up, but before we do that, let's go take a look at the cabinets. So both cabinets are out here. Let's see, I don't remember whose is whose. All right, this is mine. That's my friend's. Um, they both need to be sanded again after we did the primer yesterday. I haven't done that yet, but this gives me one more chance to look everything over. Uh, and let's see, as far as planking goes, it's a lot better than it was, but I'm not doing a skim coat on here. And we've done filler primer and as a result, uh, planking, I'm trying to see if you guys can see it, it's getting a lot better. Before this was horrible. Um, and this side is I probably a little bit better, I think. Uh, my cabinet is is doing fine. I have w one side. I don't know what's going on, but there are like very faint. It's almost like gouges. I don't know if you guys can see it. So like right here, um, I'm gonna put a little bit of spot putty in here. I don't know if just maybe the belt sander chewed up that spot or something. I didn't on the other game, but and then. We'll be okay. So we're going to do um, spot putty on this, let that dry, clean up, come out, fill a primer, sand, and then we'll be ready to paint as the temperature warms up a little bit, which will be good. It's probably about 55 degrees out right now. All right, there we go. Let's go get to work. I was just thinking of this. Uh, in case you guys don't know what glazing and spot putty is, it's like Bondo but it's meant for really small cracks. You're not doing a lot of filling with it. And the purpose of it, you know, I went through and I did it down here and you can see that uh, right in here, this other shade in there, that, that's what actually got filled. And it's very small. And then we did the same thing over here. There was a, a knot that was actually starting to, you know, show through. So we filled in the outline of it and then we'll sand it out. So this is what it is. It dries pretty quick. You don't have to mix anything. And it does a nice job. It's for a little kind of pinpricks and whatnot. So like what I might do is right in here, some of these cracks. Let me set this up and we'll 
I'll show you what I do. So there's a couple little hairline cracks in here from the planking. So sometimes, you know, the filler primer might take care of that, but let me just show you how this works. So we use a little bit of our glazing and spot putty. I literally take a tiny bit. And depending on what it is, if it's small like this, I just take my finger and take a little bit and we'll rub it right in there. We're just trying to fill that crack and then what you do is you come in and wipe off the excess. I'll put a little bit over here for that crack. Rub it in. Wipe off the excess. And then it dries pretty quick. And we're good to go from there. And that should give us a nice smooth surface after we go ahead and put our filler primer on it and sand it again. So there you go, that's that's that, and you just come in and you sand it with a pretty high grit. Um, the glazing putty says to use, uh, I thought it was like 320, but uh, you can get away with 220. I wouldn't use anything lower than that though. All right guys, there you go. And that is uh, how to quickly use glazing and spot putty. So for areas that have those gouges, when you're sanding, you should have no rectangle at all um, from your, you know, spot putty filling. You should only have that gouge filled, okay? And you shouldn't be able to feel it. It should be smooth, no ridges or anything. If you feel any ridges, you keep sanding. After you do that, you go ahead and put some filler primer on it. That helps you see if you actually missed anything or not, because if you did miss anything, you'll actually see it through the paint. And if you didn't, it'll be nice and flat. So for filler primer, I just use this stuff. Um, this stuff works pretty well. It's like six, seven bucks a can, and uh, all you gotta do is just spray it on. You actually can do nice thick coats, because you're sanding it anyway. So we'll go ahead, we'll put some of that on. So I've decided to paint only one cabinet today. I was gonna do both, and I decided that the little you know, planking cracks here. I'm actually gonna go through and I'm gonna fix all those before I paint. You know, it looks good enough, but we can make it better. So anyway, here's the reproduction cabinet. We're gonna paint that today. But before you paint, one thing you're gonna wanna do is wipe it down with a tack cloth. Tack cloth, the sticky cloth, something like this right here. And this is your chance to kind of feel all over the cabinet for anything that might catch. Because this stuff catches on everything and it picks up all the dust and it's a little bit sticky. So you go through and you do the whole thing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to wipe it off with some automotive um, prep, paint prep stuff that I usually use when I'm using automotive paint. And I'll show you what that is. So here's the stuff I use. This is auto prep. Uh, surface cleaner removes any wax grease whatever and I like to use this before I go ahead and paint just make sure I let any grease from your fingers or anything else is gone and I just spray it onto a rag and we'll go through and we'll wipe the cabinet down I just do the whole thing all right, I'll go ahead and I'll do that both sides and then we'll get ready to paint. So we're about to paint. I just want to show you that everything that I've got, we've got our paint here, which is the new mild, our new, yeah, new mild silver metallic. Uh, it's the 2005 to 2009 Hyundai code BW for the silver. If you guys want to take a look at that, I showed you that not too long ago, but here it is again. Then we've got our hardener or moderate reducer. Now for the 5.0 Crossfire, which is what this is, acrylic enamel, we're going to be doing eight parts of the single stage, which is the paint, two parts of the reducer, which is that bigger can, and then one part of the hardener, which is this smaller bottle right here. To make things easy for the first time, we're going to do eight ounces, two ounces, and one ounce. 
because the can the you know the self mixing one does not have an easy um, uh, eight to two to one on here. It has an eight to one and an eight to one to one, but not quite the one we need, which is fine. We can do simple math. But there you go. That is, and that should, I think. That'll end up being 11 ounces, so we'll see how far that actually takes us, because I'm not quite sure. All right, let's go ahead and start mixing some paint. First thing we should go ahead and do is take our can of paint and stir it. We stirred it not too long ago. It was actually yesterday when we stirred it. So we'll take that lid off. And it definitely needs to be stirred. So we'll go ahead and we'll stir it. And this can take a few minutes to get it nice and good. So we'll go ahead and do that. We've stirred it for a few minutes. That looks better. It looks silver again. So now we're gonna go ahead and we'll start pouring that into the cup. We're gonna do eight ounces of this. Let's see if we can get it on the first try. So we're gonna go right there to the eight ounce mark. There we go, there's our eight ounces of that. We need two parts of the reducer. So here's our reducer. We'll go ahead and we'll put that in. This is the same stuff I used when I was doing the Donkey Kong Resto Mod. So two ounces. Takes us up to the 10. And then we'll do an ounce of our hardener. If we can get it open. There we go. I'm just going to go up just a little bit. It's right where the 11 ounce mark would be. And then we stir it. And then we put it, strain it, and put it in the gun, and we're ready to go. So I'll go ahead and stir this. So you guys see what this looks like and how it drips off the end of the stick. So that's what how auto, thin automotive paint is. And when you're thinning your latex, you know, you do the same thing, but this is not latex. It gives you the idea of what you're looking for. So that it flows through the gun. And we'll go ahead and pour it into our gun and through the strainer. And then we'll see how this metallic spray is because this is the first time I've sprayed metallic. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll report back. All right, the acrylic enamel automotive paint is on and it feels nice and smooth and we're gonna call it good for there. Um, just to note that 
any imperfection, literally any imperfection you have will show through with this type of paint. So keep that in mind when you're doing automotive paint. Um, you're going to want to double sand, triple sand, quadruple sand, anything that you think might show through. And even then you may have missed something. But overall, for all intents and purposes, I am content with how this turned out. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll leave it as a note with that. This is like a prototype for a reproduction cab, so I have learned a lot of things along the way. And we'll keep it at that. I mean, you can even tell over here, let's see if we can get the light just right, at what sprays were the acrylic enamel with the new mild silver from the 2005 plus Hyundai paint to the Rust-Oleum aluminum color. So these brighter ones over here are the aluminum and these slightly darker ones here in the corner are the acrylic enamel. I do feel like this is a better color match for the silver, but you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, you're matching a paint to something that's 35 years old and you get what you get, but I'm happy with it overall. So we'll go from there and we'll chuck it up to a Another learning experience as far as how paint goes. But overall, I'm happy with it. All right, guys, we're gonna end this video here and we'll take a quick look over at the test panel, which may turn into a table or something. This looks really bright from that angle. Let's go over here and it feels nice and smooth and shiny. You know, it is automotive paint after all. But there you go. That is automotive paint on wood. All right, guys, that's going to end this video, and we will continue the progress with the stencils for the second time again. Take it easy, guys.